Hello, I'm Barbara Elman, and I'm a painter, a museum educator, and a teaching artist at Lincoln Center. And welcome to today's pop-up classroom. So today we're gonna to be exploring papers all around us. And what we're gonna start with is by gathering all the papers that we have available to us. We're then gonna be looking at them very carefully. We're gonna examine them. Then we are going to pair them up. And finally, we're gonna collage with them. And that's our agenda for today. So I've been collecting some papers for today's lesson. And I wanna just share with you what I've got. First of all, I've got a series of envelopes. Um, some of them kind of decorative. One has a window in it. All different kinds of envelopes. Some had bills, a notes from a friend. We get the newspaper delivered every day, and so I have a page of the newspaper, a couple pages of the newspaper. You might have some magazines. Magazines are great for this activity. You might also have um, some food or household products that come in a box, a cardboard box. This is Kleenex and it has a nice pattern on the side. I also have my favorite after dinner treat here in a box. Um, and so you can use cardboard that you find. Tissue paper. This is nice and flat. I've never really used this. I tore it out of a larger piece. But look at this one. This one was wrapped up on a gift and I saved it thinking that I might use it again. In fact, here is some gift wrapping paper. It's shiny and it has a pattern on it of Christmas ornaments and tree bits. A brown paper bag. Um, a catalog. This is a catalog of flowers and um, plants and bulbs that you might be interested in purchasing and I get those in the mail. This is a grocery list that I made of what I needed to pick up at the store. Here are some colors that I was mixing in my studio. I was looking for that perfect pink color. I have some construction paper in different colors. Here's a yellow piece. Oh, I spilled some ink and this, I wiped it up with my bounty towel. And then I looked at the towel and I thought, oh, I'm bringing this to the pop-up classroom too. And then finally, oh, I have a crown. This is a paper crown, nice and shiny. Um, and I also have some of those post-its that I talked about. Let's see. Here's one that says, Thursday, write up that pop-up plan. And here's just a little bit of a card. So those are the papers that I was able to gather, but as you know, I've been thinking about this and bringing to bring this activity to you, I had to spend some time organizing these papers. You're not gonna need nearly as many papers as I have brought. These are examples of things, but you will wanna have at least six different things to bring to today's pop-up classroom. You're also gonna need glue of any kind, a glue stick or white glue, that will work fine, and a pair of scissors would be helpful. And I'm gonna ask you to go gather those things now and you can push this on pause and I'll be here when you get back. So I wonder what you brought to this part of our lesson. I'm gonna start by looking at this envelope and the New York Times, the newspaper. And I'm looking at these two pieces of paper to kind of think about what is unique about each one of them. And I would say that right away, and what are their differences? What are their contrasts? So I think I've got like something that's a very large piece of paper with something that's a much smaller piece of paper, but they have a shape almost in common, um, which is pretty rectangular. I could play with that and adjust the shape so they were very different, but I like that it's a big rectangle and a little rectangle. Um, I also think that this is a very bright pink paper, and this is a very dull kind of grayish off-white paper. So this is bright and this is dull, that's another opposite. Now I could also um, adjust these differences by uh, doing a little shape alteration. And um, this one has a, a very straight edge around it and some torn edge because of the way I opened up the mail. 
Um, and this one comes with a very straight edge. I'm gonna now sort of tear into it to see what I can do. I'm not gonna worry too much about what I'm getting and what I'm leaving out. I'm just gonna see what happens with a kind of random tear. And see now if I like this any better, or if I think it's even more different, or more in contrast. I think the more torn it is, the better. I'm gonna just keep tearing so there's no straight rectangular side to this piece. And I'll let the envelope be the clearer, more geometric shape. I kinda like it like this. So here's a pair of papers that I think are in contrast with one another. And of course, I could use them in lots of different ways. I also like that this is printed, like type typewriting type of script um, or writing, and that this is handwritten and you can really see that. Um, I like that this is, these are columns in the newspaper with writing that's going across like this. And my friend on her envelope she wrote my address in one direction and her return address in another. So I'm seeing both vertical and horizontal ideas here. Um, and this is a little bit of an echo of what's happening here. So here's one idea of two pieces of paper that are in contrast with one another through color, through shape and edge. Um, and they also have commonalities that makes me think that they make a good pair, like a kind of team, a partnership. I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna take a look at another two pieces. I picked these two pieces next because the crown has a texture to it. Um, it's embossed, you'd have to say, and, and it's got like high points and low points. And, um, and it's very shiny. And the paper towel, also, if you were to run your hand along it, you can see that there's a texture. I think that that's what makes this paper towel so absorbent. And you can see how absorbent it was when it was picking up the ink. So I like these two because they both have distinctive textures that are really quite different. Now, this one's very, very long. And if I turn it this way and even maybe cut it, this is quite much, much shorter. So I could work with that contrast as well of something very long and thin and maybe even just wide, two different directions. And again, there's, they have nothing in common in terms of their coloration. This is gold shiny. This is like dull. Um, in a different way than the newspaper. But what I mean is, is it's mostly white and it's got some interesting kind of decorative elements because the ink now is doing that. I'm gonna push this pair aside as well. And I have one more idea here, which is different partly because of its decoration um, and also its coloration. So the cover of this catalog, which is covered with flowers, is the part that I'm interested in. I'm gonna just tear that right off like this and put the rest aside. And this brown paper bag, but I want to make the brown paper bag, you see how it's got all of these creases in it and, and little um, crimps in it? I'm gonna exaggerate that and make it even more that way. And this is how I'm gonna do it. Because the cover of the, the catalog is very smooth and slick. I'm thinking about texture again. And um, it's very uh, professional looking, very finished looking, with all of these beautiful flowers on the cover. They're called dahlias, I think. And then, let's see, if I crush this, I'm softening up the bag. And I'm also giving it lots of little tiny shapes in it, which is going to kind of remind me of what the way the, way the flower petals are made, or shaped, formed. And now I'm going to open this up. 
and show you what happens. I think that this this creasing of it is like really kind of beautiful. And I think if I take my scissors to it, I can cut it open. Just cutting part of it off. Because now that I've crushed it up, I want to kind of smooth it out. looking at these two papers side by side. You see all the tiny little shapes in it? The little creases, the little cracks? Very much like the way the petals look. I think that that's a uh, similarity between the two papers. But a brown paper bag in every way feels very different to me than this cover of a catalog because this looks very used and kind of tired now, and this looks really fresh and getting ready for spring. So I feel that they are in opposition, in contrast with one another. So I have three different pairs of ideas here. I think they'd all make an interesting collage, but I'm going to go with my first idea, the newspaper and the pink envelope. So I'm going to put these aside now. I hope you're taking a look at your papers and thinking about, well, what are their qualities? What's the color? How are the colors in contrast? What are the textures, the way they feel? How are they in contrast? Do they have writing on them, handwriting? Are you using a grocery list next to something that's been printed like the newspaper? So there are two different types of writing. Um, are you looking at the size of the papers? Are you using a tiny little post-it next to a big sheet of newspaper or a big brown paper bag? So I want you to think about the color, the texture, the size, and you can always adjust the shape the way that I adjusted the shape of my newspaper by tearing it. So you're gonna use two pieces to arrange into a collage. So you're gonna to need to have something as a background piece. Now. You could use all the, you can use many choices here. You could use the brown paper bag as your background for putting your other two pieces on if you chose to, like I could do that. Or I could do it right on top of my catalog or you could just do it on a clean piece of paper that you think somehow would be nice. And I think I'm gonna go with this idea. Now you can see that I've got more paper than I've got room for in my background. So I'm gonna to have to really think about how I'm going to arrange it. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more remodeling. I'm thinking about how this might fit. I could also fold this over like that. Now that I folded it over, you know what I could do? I could kind of tuck it in. Because it is an envelope, after all. And then I might push it close to the edge. Let's see. And now it's time for my glue. So I'm going to pull out my glue stick here because I think that's going to be the best thing to use. And I want to keep the position the same. So I'm going to glue it apart at a time. Cover it with glue. I'm gonna trim this in a minute when I'm done. It's a little bit tricky if you've got things that are overlapping one piece on top of another, but because of the size of the pieces that I have, I definitely had to overlap. They wouldn't have their own space on this piece of paper. 
Okay, let's see. Now, this is going to fit right in the corner here. So I think I can lift this up. Press it down. I've got a couple other little places. I'm trying to make my collage flat. So it takes it takes some careful gluing. So again, these are just both of these papers, the pink envelope and the newspaper I found in my recycling bin. And I think it's good that my name is now sideways because, and it's kind of cool that my name is in it because it sort of suggests, oh, and I made it. It's like signing my own collage, even though the signature is from my friend who sent me this card. So I'm making sure that it's nice and flat. Sometimes you have to turn your work upside down to do that. Get to all the little places. It still is a bit of a pocket, isn't it? Like I could probably hide something else in there if I wanted. Mm, I might have to glue that down. Whoops! A little bit more. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim this edge. And the easiest way for me to do that is to turn it over and I can see exactly what's sticking out. So I'm gonna just look at this for a moment and see all the different things that happened here. I kind of like the way that this is a diagonal line and that the, that the newspaper is folded on a diagonal line and then this is a diagonal edge. It's absolutely just touching the edge of the paper it means the newspaper is tangent to the construction paper at two edges. And look at my envelope is overlapping my newspaper and then my newspaper is overlapping the back of my envelope. So I've got a double kind of overlapping going on. And I am enjoying this tiny little strip at the edge. I'm gonna hold it up for you the way that I've been looking at it. So it looks something like this. So I hope you're gluing your two pieces of paper onto something else. And in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to just put it aside and take a brief pause because I would like to introduce you to a work of art. So I'm wondering about your two pieces of paper and what you chose and how you might have altered them, maybe altered the shape or the texture or made some kind of adjustment to the papers so they really exaggerated the contrast between the two and then how you arranged them, how you glued them down. But I would like to show you uh, a work of art by an artist named Robert Motherwell. And it commemorated the 25th anniversary of the Mostly Mozart Festival at Lincoln Center. So we're gonna pull that up and show it to you. So I want you to take a look at this artwork because it happens to be a collage as well. And I want you to look at the differences in the papers. He used basically three pieces of paper. Um, a background piece of paper, and he used um, two other pieces of paper. And I'm wondering what you noticed about them. So, and how are they different from one another? So you might notice that there is a difference in color between the very strong red piece of paper, which is flat and all consistently red, and the other piece of paper, which seems to have some kind of uh, line work and dot work on it and a kind of pattern. And I'm wondering if any of you know what kind of paper that is and what it might be, have come from. It happens to be a little bit of a musical composition. In fact, the first page. And if you look at the very top right hand corner of the piece of paper, um, almost where it touches the red, the, the top edge of the red piece of paper, you're going to notice a name and the name is Mozart. And it refers to the composer whose music that happens to be. 
Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, very well-known composer. And in fact, you see that the poster says mostly Mozart Festival, and this is in honor of this particular composer at Lincoln Center. There are other things that make these two pieces of paper very strong and in contrast with one another, and I want you to look at that. Some of the edges look like they've been torn, and you can just trace those edges, perhaps in space with your finger. And some of the edges look like they've been cut, like with scissors, something very, very straight. And I would say the very top of the red shape is a cut line. So they're different in their contours, in their outside shapes. And then there is another very additional something in this composition, which is this very kind of loose black mark. Um, I don't think it's paper. I think it was made with another material, another art supply. Do you have any ideas about that? It might've been made with paint, it might have been made with ink. But what's interesting about that black shape is that the color is very much like the notes in the musical paper. And it is very strongly and very strong contrast between the red piece of paper to see red and black together like that. And even in contrast with the background paper, which is white or sort of a creamy white. And the shape of, the, of this black mark looks kind of like the letter M. And I think that's interesting too, because we know that the composer's name is Mozart, and we know that the artist's last name is Motherwell. And so the M is the initial of both of those gentlemen, both Mozart the composer and Motherwell the artist. So that mark looks kind of like that letter to me. Now, you might have heard some music being played in the background of today's program, and that music happens to also have been composed by Mozart. We were just trying to give you a little sneak peek of where we were going. It's very beautiful music, and this was piano music, I think, that is in this poster. Now, there's one more thing that I would like to do to my collage, which is to add some kind of gestural mark um, it could be a letter, could be a line, it could be a shape that links my two pieces of paper together in the way that he has linked the black of the music notation and overlap the red shape and sort of continue it onto his background. He's kind of tied all the parts of his collage together with that black mark. And so in a way, I've kind of signed the collage as well, in the same way that Motherwell has signed his collage. And I'm gonna suggest that if you don't have ink or you don't have paint, you could do it with a marker or with some other drawing tool. Thinking about what you could add to your collage that would connect the two pieces of paper and somehow complete it in a way that's pleasing to you. And I'm gonna do that now and I hope you will too. Okay. So I'm set up to add a little bit of ink. And I've just got a brush here. I got wet. And I'm just gonna put it right. Remember what I'm gonna try to do is I'm going to try to connect the two pieces of paper together with some kind of mark that makes sense to me. Um, and that sort of finishes out my collage. So I'm thinking about what I have so far and what it is I'd like to add and thinking about how Robert Motherwell has linked his two pieces together with that big black something that looks like the letter M. So I'm going to do something. So that's just like dropping the ink and now I'm going to just move it around. And now I'm going to even bring it over down to my envelope. And I like the way the brush is all splayed out. It makes it that nice kind of wispy thing that Robert Motherwell also used. Maybe I'll do a little bit of it there too. And um, it's 
kind of looking like a question mark. Let's see, might do a little bit more here. Now, if someone really looks carefully, they'll see that I've signed it by putting that envelope there, just the way, same way that Robert Motherwell did by adding his line. So this, I think, is my finished work for today. And I hope you will add a mark of some kind to connect your two collaged pieces together to the background. I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm Barbara Elman. We've been exploring papers all around us. Thank you for coming and keep making things.